Hello and welcome to another game of Chainmail, another lesson where we're going to learn the effects of heroes and commanders on the Chainmail armies. Today we have two units on each side. The red team is led by a hero in the first unit. The second unit is led by the commander. Here on the blue team one unit is led by a hero and also the second unit is led by a hero so there's no commander on this side simply two heroes <clears throat> on this side a hero and a commander now just a quick uh layout of what we have here for the battle for the blue team they are divided by type. We have 39 heavy foot plus a hero. And here we have 29 crossbowmen plus a hero. On the red team, the first unit is 20 heavy foot plus 19 crossbow and a hero. And on this unit, we have 20 heavy foot 10 crossbows, and a commander. Now the commander is going to count as heavy foot, um, which is this unit is mostly heavy foot, so he'll fight as uh, a heavy foot also. So he'll be technically the 21st heavy foot. Um, I didn't see any rules saying that the commander is a hero or a superhero, so for the purposes of this game, the hero is going to fight, or the commander will fight as a regular uh, unit. The heroes, of course, will fight as four men in the unit that they are accompanying. So for the red side, that will be the light infantry crossbowmen, and then for the blue side, it'll be one for heavy infantry and one for light infantry crossbow. To recap the hero rules, they fight as four men of the unit they join. They also add one to the dice score of the unit they join. They are the last to take wounds, and they must take four wounds in order to be neutralized. The commander rules, they add one to the die score of a unit they join, or within 12 inches. So I don't believe that those pluses should stack. The commander will also automatically rally any unit he has joined, and if the commander is captured or killed, all units must check morale as excess casualties at minus two to the dice score. So if the commander gets killed, it's going to be a hard time for the rest of the army. Uh, there are also baggage train rules. I have made models for the baggage train, but we're going to wait until next week's fantasy battle to roll out the baggage train. I've already diced for the sides. Blue will have this side, red will have this side, and also, as we don't know what kind of terrain we're going to be marching into, in order for maximum maneuverability, each unit will be starting in column formation so they'll be able to snake around whatever we have in terms of terrain. So I've gone ahead and selected nine random, well not selected, I pulled out nine random terrain cards. We'll drop them down. We'll have eight uh, two by four across the board here, and that will determine the battlefield. So, turn one, let us roll for initiative. Blue has a five, red has a two, so blue will go first. 
in the movement phase. The light infantry can move 12. And as we learned in the last game, this is definitely a battle of maneuver. I did place objectives in the center of each side for each team to go for. Let's see what we can accomplish with this. In order to do this, it looks like our best bet will be if they do a little crisscross and attempt to they can support the infantry. Okay, so the light infantry are going to move 12. Like so. <clears throat> the heavy infantry only move 9, which will be up here. forest have been blocking line of sight so there's no shooting in turn one likewise these are mixed formations so they'll only be able to move the nine inches of each formation and so the hero is going to decide that he's going to move up the hill and prepare to take advantage of that height so it's five inches to the hill, and then they can move two inches up the hill, which will be right here. And then nine inches for the commander. Be right there. All right, so that'll be the end of turn one. And now we'll move to turn two. Once again, blue will take the initiative. And the crossbow unit will be able to now see the red unit here cresting the hill. So they are going to go ahead. They are going to take this opportunity to change formation and get in position to fire their weaponry. And I keep forgetting these fatigue markers. The heavy infantry, however, will continue their advance. And they do not want to get into charge range. But they are probably already in. So this is what they're going to do. They're going to take a half move, which will be four and a half over here and then it's another half move to turn to change facing so they will do that And that will put them in line formation, just like so. Likewise, I believe this group here is going to take a full turn to change formation. So what they'll do is they're going to do this. The commander is going to make a half move in this direction. And then they're going to take the rest of their move and turn to the right. And that will give them their second fatigue marker. So, for the missile phase, the blue unit here with crossbows will fire upon this red unit. 
There are 15 shooting. So we'll break them up into a seven and an eight. And firing at half armor or shield, which is the heavy infantry. They will need a one to three. We'll have, we'll cause three casualties and a three, four, or five will cause four casualties. All right, so we've got seven casualties that they have inflicted upon this unit. This is a unit that is 40 strong. The lower of the two breakpoints is 25%. And as we have not reached 25%, which is 10, they're going to not have, they will not have to take a excess casualty morale check. Um, this unit has no shooting. Now here, both units will be able to shoot. And we have five here. And four here, which is nine. Nine, a one to two is four casualties. And a three to six is five casualties. And that's a six, so this will be five casualties here. And once again, there are 30. Their breakpoint for the light infantry is 25%. So that will be eight, in which case uh, they still don't have to make a check. Here we have five shots at the heavy infantry here. And that will be either two or three casualties. And that will be three casualties. All right, that is the end of turn two. So we've reached the end of turn two. And so I'm going to take a little break here and we'll come back in the next video with the next two turns. Thank you and I'll see you again soon.